So here we are, Mr. Nice, standing at Lisboa 2010 Internoise. Uh, could you give a short introduction of yourself? Well, I'm from the uh, Faculty of uh, Architecture in Delft, the Netherlands, and I'm teaching to architects or people who want to be architects. So uh, that's my profession. So it's always on a level where it's not too theoretical, but I want to have it done in, in practice, in building practice. Okay. That's what I want to do. Good. So you're the person who explains to architects what Ruma Kutsu is all about? Yeah. In fact, we do in, uh, in the first year already. And, uh, but I'm retiring now, so I have a, uh, someone succeeds me and he's doing all that work now. Um, so I redraw more or less from, uh, from teaching. Okay. But, uh, that's in fact what I'm doing. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. And what brings you to Internoise? Uh, to Internoise, well, I was thinking about how to improve um, uh, classrooms. And um, I'm interested in, in things which are what we call uh, room acoustics, but room acoustics is uh, normally seen as concert halls, etc., lecture halls. But Room acoustics is also a quiet cafe or a restaurant or whatever, or a classroom or a sports facilities, and uh, that's what I'm dealing with. Um, but the specific topic why I'm here is because of classrooms. Okay, good. Well, I visited your paper session and you were talking about U50. Can you explain a bit <coughs> what that is? Yes, U50 is. Um, well, you always have early sound from reflections all, uh, all over the whole. Um, early uh, reflections and uh, reflections arriving later and it has been found that there's a division about 50 milliseconds from the direct sound um, that the first 50 milliseconds are help the direct sound for, for, from a speaker and the other from 50 uh, milliseconds to infinity it's found detrimental. Now another part is that you have noise, always noise, like we have here a bit of noise around and you have to add the noise and the detrimental late reflections. And then you can calculate easily what's called U50. It's, um, we have C80 which is quite old for concert halls uh, D50 is from uh, uh, found in, the, in Germany about uh, 1950 or so. Um, <clears throat> now C50 is in fact the same as D50 on a logarithmic axis, but um, if you add noise, you will get U50. It's a logarithmic scale, and uh, well, that's it. Okay, that's very clear. Yes. And can you uh, say something more about your session? What the conclusions mainly? The session, my talk or the session yeah, as a whole? Your talk, uh, first. My talk, well, what I want to emphasize is that you might have um, what's called overdamped uh, classrooms. Um, but, yeah, I have to be a bit, a bit cautious in it because the, the ideal reverberation time that we found is about 0.4 seconds. And uh, if you go to as low as 0.2 seconds in a, in a primary school uh, thing, then you might, might find that there are too few early reflections helping the, the, the teachers. Um, now that is from 0.4 to 0.2, but it's, there are so many classrooms found in the session where it's 1.4 or even 2 seconds in, in, in uh, like we saw the uh, Italian, the classrooms or in Turkey, we, we have oh. contact with people in Turkey, etc. So it's a bit of luxury to, 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 ha to think about 0.4 or 0.2 seconds. Do you think it happens a lot in practice that classrooms get overdamped? No, I don't think so. Don't it's, think it's, so. it's just, it intrigued me because there was a session about, well, one of the early congresses in maybe eight or nine years ago there was a discussion about uh, could classrooms be overdamped and many people reported yes and I thought so well if it's if it's true that there, there are ex there exist uh, overdamped classrooms but if it's so then there must be something to calculate it that was in fact uh, what my challenge was and in fact I found a method if you the, the very simple U50 uh, method you can find what 
if over damping exists and, and to be uh, to, to take uh, uh, all kinds of, of measures to, to prevent over damping it's it's not very very difficult to <laughs> avoid it that. it's, it's okay. much more difficult to introduce uh, the, the, the minimum required uh, absorption exactly Good, and then the final question, what do you think of the seminar in a whole, Internoids 2010? Um, my session on classrooms, I, I liked it, or do you mean...? Yeah, the session in classrooms and maybe the whole event. Well, the, the, the session in classrooms was, uh, I was amazed about how bad uh, some classrooms still are. It's, it's, it's difficult, uh, like the, uh, one of my Italian colleagues, he, uh, he, he showed us marble and uh, very flat All hard surfaces, hard surfaces. Yeah. and they, I think they had uh, 1.8 seconds uh, reverberation time and, uh, and uh, an awful lot of noise 83 decibel he was talking about now there's a lot to do on, on that part but on the other hand we have a uh, there were some some talks about amplification because um, as, as some of the speakers uh, said they try to push amplification into uh, into classrooms, the people who, who earn their money uh, with it. But I'm a bit afraid of that uh, development because if you have amplification, um, then you need, in fact, a, uh, a very low reverberation time. If you have amplification in a, uh, in a reverberant room, it's like hell. It makes it, it worse. It, it yeah. makes it much, much worse. So you, the first step to take is always to have the reverberation time down, and to ha <coughs> then you can input a amplification system. But if you have a low reverberation time, you don't need an amplification system if it's a small classroom, yeah. and if it's getting wider and longer, etc. Then the vocal effort might be too high from the teacher to to have the, the required signal-to-noise ratio. And then you need amplification, but I think then you're talking about 12 meters long or so, eight, 10 meters wide, then it yeah. start, you start to think about amplification. And another point is that uh, there's a, we measured a large spread between individual voices of, of about 10 decibel. That is, that's, that's quite a lot, 10 yeah. decibel. So. Some people might need it, but others have loud voices and they, think they can hurt in in concertgebouw if, if you want to, uh, so loud. So it's it 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 depends on on the on the talker, the teacher itself, whether or not uh, the, his voice or her voice is heard. But one of my conclusions was that many teachers talk too loud. And they should be taught themselves how to use their voice. It's not in the uh, if, if if they are at school themselves to, to, to learn to be a teacher, nobody teaches them how to use their voice. No. They could be could speak softer probably. Some speak too loud and they can go to, to other people but it's on a on a voluntary basis and uh, there should be paid more attention to that uh, subject. The training the voice. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right in, in that point, absolutely. Yeah. Good. Thank you very much for the interview. Um, okay. We will put a link on the internet also on Acoustic Bulletin where people can find out more about you and your service. Yeah. Okay. Things you do, so yeah. thank you very much. Yeah.